Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Wedding Industry Social Club. Um, talk about packages versus a la carte. I'm Alan Berg. I've uh, met many of you when I was down there for the Easy Weddings conferences. Um, I'm starting this from New Jersey. It is actually still uh, Wednesday here. I know you're Thursday morning over there, so we're in the uh, in the evening over here. It looks like uh, I think I've started live. So if anybody is uh, tuned in and listening, put in a comment. Let me know you can hear me, so we can uh, we can go forward with. Oh, let's see. No, I didn't want to do that. Let's cancel that. Okay. So somebody give me a sign here. Let me know that you are tuned in and listening, so we can uh, we can move forward with this. Any comments here? Let me go into the comment section. No, nope. there we go. So Emma, if you are tuned in, let me know that you can hear. I think we got some people joining in here now. Let's go in here, see if I can see. There we go. Let me tell Emma I am live. Create post. Looks like I'm live here. Right. Sorry for any uh, technical difficulties. We are literally around the world from one another. So I want to make sure that we're started and all set to go. You are live. There we go. There we go. Michaela is on here. Terrific. Thank you so much. Welcome. Good morning to you. This is a, uh, a great topic. Um, some of you might know that I've started a podcast recently, the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast, and the most popular topic so far on my podcast is which is better for you packages or a la carte and i have to tell you that there's no one blanket answer for everyone but the general consensus is that it's easier for you to sell packages and it's easier for people to buy packages even if you think you can't have packages for your business because so many wedding professionals tell me everything i do is custom and if everything I do is custom, how can I possibly do packages? But the truth of the matter is, everything everybody does is custom. Every wedding is different. Every uh, every couple is different. Everything you do, whether it's flowers or food or photography or music or invitations, or whether you're a celebrant doing custom ceremonies, everything you're going to do is going to be custom. So how do you go about deciding whether or not you can create packages? What I do with my clients is we take a look at what you've been selling, how you've been selling it, and some people have packages already, and then they find out that they have to customize those packages. And what I then look at is, are we typically customizing the packages in similar ways time and time again, which just tells us that our packages weren't created the right way. And that's an important point here when you're thinking about packages versus a la carte and packages in general, you're going to create packages that you think are what your customers want, but it might not be that. And they might be telling you by their actions that they actually want differently. Uh, so for instance, I'm working with one of my venue clients here in the States and they've created packages. And what they found is that more people are buying their top package than they had anticipated, which is a good problem. Believe me, that's a good problem to have there. So what we're looking at now is what else could they be adding onto that top package to make it even higher because some people are signaling just by their actions, they're buying more of this top package and some of those people would have spent even more money than that. So the way we go about doing this is looking at what people are buying and then trying to create packages that include those items so that less people will want to customize and tweak around it. And again, I always, I want, I want to say, I know that you're customizing. You're going to customize the colors, the flavors, the styles, and things like that. But that doesn't mean you can't have packages. Florists and floral designers that tell me all the time, I can't do packages. No, you can. <laughs> you absolutely can. And still give people flexibility within those packages. If you've ever gone to a restaurant and you've had a price fixed menu where you get to choose one appetizer, one entree, and one dessert item for the same price, that's a package. Now, within that, you might sometimes find out that if you wanted the steak, 
you might have to pay $5 more. So that's just a variation on the same package. It's not a separate package. It's a variation on that. So why can't you do the same thing? If you were a florist, why couldn't you say that you're going to get uh, centerpieces, you're going to get some church flowers, you're going to get some uh, head table design, and then within that, you're going to be able to choose from these different styles, from these different things. And if you want to spend more, if you find something that you like that's more, you want a different flower, you can pay the difference. That's the same type of thing as the price fix menu at a restaurant. So when I'm looking at this, I'll just take the client I'm working with here in the States. They have three different levels. Let's just call them good, better, best. They don't, they have better names for that than that, but let's just call them good, better, best. And what they're letting people do is choose the food from good, better, best and the bar from good, better, best. And then whether or not certain other suppliers are included like the DJ or a celebrant or whatever from the good, better, best packages they have there. So what you end up having is three choices, right? Actually, no more than three choices. We're going exponentially here. So if you choose the basic food package, you could have three different bar packages and three different variations on the uh, suppliers. So I said, you know, it's, it's too confusing here. Let's look at what people are buying. And if we find that not that many people are buying all across the board, basic, 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 well, maybe that's telling us we shouldn't even have that package. I've done that with a few clients recently. We've gotten rid of their basic package altogether. Why are we offering the cheapest thing that we have? Why don't we make the cheapest thing even higher? So how can you go about determining whether or not packages would be good for you? I can tell you that in a survey that was done of couples here in the States, couples found it easier to start with a package, even if there was customization allowed around that. And the reason is it's fewer decisions. Fewer decisions uh, avoids what's called decision paralysis. Decision paralysis is when we provide someone with so many choices that what they choose to do is to not decide. <laughs> and we've all been there. If you've been on a site like Amazon or any of these sites that have so many choices there, or you've gone to watch a movie online on, 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 on whether it's a um, Prime or whether it's on Netflix or any of the other uh, streaming services, there's so many choices how do you decide? And if you've ever gotten stuck where you ended up not deciding, that's decision paralysis. So we want to avoid the decision paralysis for our customers, not by having less choices, but by having them choose from less choices. So here's something I'd want you to do. Unless you only offer one thing, in which case you can't possibly have a package because there's only one thing. It's it's just the one thing there. If you offer more than one thing, so someone can buy more than one thing from you and there are variations, just look at what people are already buying. I like to pull out my geek flag here and start to take a spreadsheet and do it. So if you just follow me along here, even if you're not a left brain, you know, analytical nerdy type, if you made a spreadsheet and the first column was the name of the customer. So in this case, weddings, it's the couple. And then you might have the date. I like to put the day of the week so I can see the difference between a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, weekday. Uh, the How much they spent, obviously. The guest count. Now, that may not matter for whatever you do, but I like to have it on there. And then the other columns are going to be how you currently sell. So if you're selling a la carte, every one of those columns would be something that you sell. Now, you don't want to have a thousand columns. So again, if you're a florist, you don't want to have every type of flower going out there, but it's going to be centerpieces and it's going to be decor type flowers and church flowers and boot, boutonnieres and bouquets and bridesmaids flowers and so forth. And ha you know, group it as, as tightly as you can there. And then you're going to look and see what are people buying together? This is the key. Look at what people are already buying together. If they're already buying together these things, then don't sell them separately. Or if you don't want them to buy things separately, in other words, you want them to have this and this together. If they buy this, they should have that as well. Then don't offer it as a la carte. It reduces the choices that they're going to be able to choose from. Remember, the, the goal is not to have less choices. The goal is for them to choose from less choices so that they can actually make a choice. Once you present someone with more than 
two choices, two options, you're making it exponentially harder for them to actually decide. That's what you're doing. It, it, that you are making it exponentially harder. You get to three things, you need to eliminate one before they can actually make a decision. You don't want them to choose from three. Now, there are some people that will say, and actually the Journal of Consumer Psychology calls it the center stage effect, where if you take three things, people will, len will lean towards the one in the middle. And that's true. That is a psychological fact. If you go to four, there's no middle anymore. There's two in the middle. So no more than three should be presented to a customer at any time. Remember, I said presented to the customer. You can have 25 choices. They just can't possibly be all right for this particular customer. So what you want to do is before you present the customer with everything you offer, you want to start eliminating things. You want to say, not right. This is not right. This is not right. So here's an easy example of that. One of my clients is a, a venue that does catering and they have had a menu, which was a package, it was a PDF a document that was every type of menu that they offered. And they thought they were being helpful by saying, here's, here's the choices. But it was breakfast, brunch, lunch, afternoon snack, dinner plated, dinner buffet, dinner stations, bar, desserts, going, everything. It was literally 40 pages. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Four zero, 40 pages. And the thing is, if you're having a Saturday night wedding or a Friday night wedding or a Sunday night wedding, you don't need to see breakfast or brunch or lunch or afternoon snacks. You don't need to see that. If you want to ask about a brunch the day after the wedding, well, we can give you that menu as well. But right now, let's talk about your wedding. Were you looking for plated or buffet or stations? And if they say we're looking for a plated dinner, well, then only show them that one. Now there's no noise. There's no distractions of these other things that they're going to flip through or have to flip through to get to the one that they want. So we want to get them to a decision quicker. And we're going to do that by giving them less choices when we present them with the choices. Uh, and that's why many of you, those of you that I got to meet at the uh, Easy Weddings in Sydney and in Melbourne, I talk my book here over my shoulder called Shut Up and Sell More Weddings and Events is about asking better questions. If you're asking better questions, those people will give you the information you need to be able to present them then with the choices that are better for them. So packages versus a la carte. Your goal is to get them to want to choose you to do their wedding or event. And if they're going to choose you to do their wedding or event, it's not about whether they want blue or purple or green or this particular song or that one or where they want to take their pictures. It's them choosing you because they want the results that only you can provide. That's not in a package. That's not, a, that's not about a package. That's not about your options or your ser services because what you do, everybody else in your particular category does. Every wedding planner does the same things. If you were to list out the services that a planner provides, they'll do the same things. The results are different because only you can give them those specific results. Same with a photographer, same with a band or a DJ or a celebrant. It's just, you can make a list of the things you do and everyone in your category does those same things. So the idea is that we're not selling the services, we're selling the outcomes. The idea of packages is to show them these particular services, but to talk about them in a way that presents the outcomes of those things instead of the things themselves. So here's an example. If we were going to go out to dinner together, and I hope someday <laughs> soon I'll be able to come back down there and be able to do it right now. I don't think you I think your country wants us. We come down to have dinner. Do we first choose the restaurant or the dish that we're going to eat? Because if we choose the dish we're going to eat, that's great, but we're limiting ourselves there. So even if we think there's a restaurant that we know we like a particular dish, when you get there, if they say either that dish isn't available that day or they have some specials, would you like to hear the specials? You're going to want to hear the specials and you're probably not going to leave the restaurant if they tell you that they don't have that particular dish. You still chose the restaurant. Same thing with catering. With catering, you shouldn't be selling your menus. You should be selling you providing that food or service. 
the idea of packages is to reduce their choices once it comes to the menu part so that they don't have to make all of these choices. You know, think about a typical wedding. Are they going to have to choose every appetizer? Are they going to have to choose the salad course? Are they going to have to decide what they want in or on the salad? Are they going to have to decide the dressing? Are they going to have to choose the entree, right? Yeah, they're going to choose the entree. That really, to me, is the only thing they should have to choose. Everything else, they shouldn't have to choose. That it should be really up to your chef. So that's a discussion for another time. So the idea of packages versus a la carte. When you're dealing with a couple, you want them to fall in love with you. You want them to know you, like you, trust you. It's out of a book called The Go-Giver by Bob Berg. No relation to me, B-U-R-G. And he's got this book called The Go-Giver. It talks about people buy from people they know, they like, and they trust. They have to know, like, and trust you because they're giving you a deposit for an event that's gonna happen months or a year later, right? So that's a lot of trust. They're giving you deposit now, that's a lot of trust in there. Packages are a way to streamline the decision process for your customer. The more friction you add to the process, the less likely they're gonna to wanna to do business with you. People just make it harder to do business with us. Sometimes they do that. Um, I just had this recently. You've probably had a similar thing. I actually just recorded a, a, a podcast about this. You ever have somebody who took longer to tell you why they couldn't do something for you than it would have taken them to do it? Probably. <laughs> I think it's happened to all of us. I just had that happen to me recently. That's friction in the process. And then you choose to do business with someone else. So how do you make it easier for your customers to buy from you? Because I feel you actually don't need to be selling them. What you need to be doing is helping them buy. And why do I say that? In the wedding industry, there is very little actual cold calling where you're just trying to find out if somebody is in need of your product or service. I started out in the industry doing cold calling because I was trying to get businesses like yours to buy advertising in the magazine that I was working for at the time. I was cold calling because you didn't make an inquiry. I had to find out if there was a need. Now, it wasn't necessarily totally cold because I looked in the other magazines, the newspaper, and other places people were advertising at the time, and I found people that were advertising. So I knew there was a need, but you hadn't reached out to me. I would venture to say that most of you listening here, if not all of you, get most of your inquiries coming to you through Easy Weddings, through your website, through social media, you get the inquiry coming to you. So they're already identifying themselves that they need what you do. Well, if they already need what you do, just help them buy. Don't sell them, help them buy. And help them buy the results of specifically choosing you because they can't get those results anywhere else. So that's the key, is help them buy. Now, how do we do that? When someone comes to you, one of the worst things you can do, and I've spoken about this down there, and I've spoken about this in my books and in my speaking and in my podcast, that one of the worst things you can do is send them a list of your services. Here's my services and here's my prices. Because you're commoditizing what you do. You're saying you should compare me to all of the other companies based upon this list of services and these prices. And what you're asking for is the cheaper price to win. That's what you're doing. Right? You're saying, this is what you need to know, when it's really not. Now, occasionally, occasionally I see someone who's doing it better, where their list of services is not just services, but it's outcomes of those services. Um, I'll give you a for instance. I was doing uh, working with a disc jockey, an entertainment company here in the States recently, and on his website, he was talking about a ceremony sound system. Now, it's an important factor, but he was selling it as a technology. We have wireless microphones and a ceremony sound system, and we can provide that, and it's this much money. Okay. The problem with that is every other DJ company can do the same thing. Now, if you go to his website, it says, and under ceremony sound, it says, want to ensure that your grandmother can hear every word of your personalized vows, and so can the rest of your guests, no matter how close or far away they're sitting? We have the perfect sound system and wireless microphones to ensure 
that every one of your guests will hear every word of your personalized vows. See, that's the why, not the what. So one of the things I brought up to him is how many people buy from you? And in the in case over here in the States, I said, how many of your customers are not having their ceremony at the same location as their venue, as the reception? And in his case, he said, it's almost all of them are having it together at the same place. They're not having it in a church and then coming there. They're having it right there. So there's a perfect example of how he could package. Instead of making ceremony sound an option, he should just put it in the package and say, it's included at no extra charge. If someone says they don't need it, and say, no problem, it was included at no extra charge, it's the same price. He could throw something else in if he wanted or whatever, but don't lower the price. You wanna be able to get them to buy the results that they can get from you, but it also has to be profitable for you. You want to encourage them to buy the things that are gonna give them the right results, not the cheapest thing you have. So packages versus a la carte. Many people in his case would be selling the ceremony sound, separate from the reception, separate from the, the monogram, separate from uplighting, separate from dance floor lighting, separate from all these things. That can work for some people. As a matter of fact, I have this phrase, almost everything works sometimes, nothing works all the time. Our goal is when you get an inquiry, I want you to convert more of those people. So think about this. By the time someone gets to you, makes an inquiry through Easy Weddings, they have already done what? They've gone online, they've looked for wedding information. If they're in Australia, they're going to find you because Easy Weddings is the biggest in the World Wide Web of Australia for weddings. It is the biggest planet there, right? So they find Easy Weddings, they go to your particular area, whether it's in Victoria or Queensland or whatever, they find your area. And when they're in your area, they then go to your category. They go to your particular category. They go to your particular listing there. They like what they see and they make an inquiry. Along the way, they've been eliminating your competitors. They've been finding ones that aren't quite right. Maybe they don't like the photos. Maybe it's about their videos or reviews or their listing, however it is. Whatever it is, they don't, they're saying no, 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 no. And they said yes to you and a small group of others. At that point, you want to move them forward towards getting the results, again, that they can only get from you. So when someone says, and we know this happens all the time, you get an inquiry and it asks for your packages, they're not really asking for your packages. They just don't know what to ask. They don't know how to shop for what you do. It's, it's very common because they're buying something they've never bought before. And if they're buying something they've never bought before, they don't know how to shop for it. So what do you do? You ask how much things cost. You ask for the services. They don't need a DJ. They need their guests to have an amazing time. They don't need a photo booth. They need something fun for their guests to do when they're not dancing. They don't need flowers just to have flowers. They wanna create an ambiance. They want a theme. They want to, their decor is gonna mean something and gonna have a significance there. So you think about what you're selling. Are you selling just the products and services, or are you selling the results of that? And how do we make it easier for people to buy? We make it easier for people to buy by having them make less choices. Ultimately, it could be one choice. And the one choice is, is do they want to choose you and get your results? I've done that with some of my clients. On a popular date, think about the Saturdays in the most popular months of the year, right? Just think about whatever the most popular month is for you, whatever the most popular day most likely to be a Saturday. If you are a solopreneur, so if it's just you, you're the only videographer or you're the only DJ or you're the only celebrant you can only be in one place at a time and you're going to get multiple inquiries for that date. So supply and demand is in your favor. Maybe you remember the movie, Mary Poppins and the story of Mary Poppins. She had that bag and that bag had everything in the bag, whatever she wanted. Remember she pulled that, what was it? A, a canoe or a kayak or something out of the bag there. Well, you, sh you could be like that. And you could say, I offer one package on Saturday night in popular season and it comes with everything I have. If you say I want this particular feature, yes, that's included. 
So uh, again, I'll go, let's go with a photographer. If you're doing a wedding of 150 people and you've determined that it's better for you to have two, two photographers at something like that, then don't even offer them one. It's not an option. You're not going to get the coverage you need. It's not going to reflect well on your business. Only offer that. If you feel that they should have albums and the only way you want to sell is for people to have albums, then every package should include albums. And you could say on a Saturday night in season, you're going to get one album for you. You're going to get two parent albums. You're going to have two shooters. We're going to do an engagement shoot. We're going to shoot the rehearsal dinner. We're going to be there until from the, from the beginning of the ceremony all the way through the end of actually from you getting ready all the way through the last dance. Right. And it's one price. If they don't want any of that, it's the same price because somebody should be paying that for you. So now you've created a package for those particular days. You may not do that on a Tuesday <laughs> because supply and demand is not in your favor on Tuesdays. But there's another side to this. I, I know some photographers that say, I only want to shoot 25 weddings a year. doesn't matter what day of the week it is. They're going to charge the same price on any of those days. So why would you offer a low package at all? Why don't you just say, this is what I charge. This is what it comes with you can add on to that. So the idea of packages is to maximize the profitability for you while making it easier for your customers to make decisions. I hope that makes some sense. Um, if anybody does have any questions, I believe there is a chat feature here. So, um, and Emma, you can tell me if I'm right here. So I think you guys can type in comments there. So if anybody does have a question, feel, feel free to chat them in. I'm gonna just take a drink here remembering that it is eight o'clock in the evening for us here. So this is for Matt. I don't know if Matt's listening in, but Matt from Easy Weddings, uh, I know has uh, gotten into bourbon a little bit. So there we go. That's for you, Matt, Matt and Kat. Okay, so anybody have any questions about packages or anything else while you have me here about sales in general, please put them in there. So think about this, when it comes to sales, how can you make it easier to buy? Packages is one way. Thank you, Alyssa. Cheers to you too. Uh, how can you make it easier to buy? Let's look at other categories here. Um, again, if you only offer one thing, then there's no discussion to be had. Uh, I was working with a venue recently and she charges the same price any day of the year, any month, doesn't matter. If you want to rent her venue, that's what it is. She, at the time, didn't have any other options. It was the rental of the venue, that was it. You had to get a caterer separately, decor separately, everything else was separate. Whatever was included came with that, and that was it. Well, packages doesn't make sense for her. However, she was looking for ways to profit more. So we talked about other services that she could add on, put them together into packages, and now say to people, this is what's included, it's all together into here, this is the price, but she, they're getting more value. People buy value, they don't buy price. So that's another thing to look at is if you don't currently have anything else that you sell, is it possible to add things on? Sometimes those things are not services that you're gonna provide. Sometimes those are services that you're gonna work with a friend in the industry, they're gonna provide that, you're selling it, they're gonna give you a preferred rate on it so that you're selling it, it's like you're getting a sales commission. Uh, there's a, a DJ I work with, he's actually the producer of my podcast. And there's one venue that provides him 40% of his business. And I said, do they pay you the, the same rate that a couple would pay you? And he said, no, they pay 15% less. And that difference is he doesn't have to do any selling. They've already sold it and they're just telling them, listen, you're gonna come and show up and you're gonna do this wedding. So they've included him in their package. He now benefits because he doesn't have to make a sale. He just has to go and do the work that he does. Yes, he has to do a great job. Yes, he's going to do a great job. They're gonna review him. It's gonna reflect well on the venue as well. The venue now profits more because they've made a bigger sale. They're paying him less than they would pay over there. Okay, so Alyssa says, if you're doing a flat rate package, don't you lose out on opportunities to upsell throughout the process? Well, that's a great question, Alyssa. If you sold uh, something that includes everything that you do, there's nothing else to upsell. So it's the difference between top-down selling and selling from the bottom up. Uh, when I talk about how to give prices, 
the least favorite way to talk about prices that I can consider is doing a starting price. If you tell someone our prices start at, what you've just said is the cheapest thing I have is this. They don't know how high it can go. They don't know the range of what you can do. So I really don't like that. I actually like what's called top-down selling. And I will show you how I explain top-down selling by using Jenga. <laughs> and yes, I'm actually using Jenga game. So how does this work? And, and Alyssa, I'm not sure what you do. So if you put into the comments, tell me what your industry is. So maybe I can help tailor this, uh, this example or an example to you specifically as I take another sip. Okay, not yet. So the way top-down selling works is instead of presenting the, the client, the couple, with all the things you can do for them, you want to find out the results that they're looking for. And then put together a package, right? Whether you sell a la carte or whether you sell packages, put together a group of services that will give them the results that they want. I don't want you to oversell them. I don't want you to undersell them. Overselling is selling them things that they don't need just because they'll buy them. That's not fair to you. It's not fair to them. You end up with customers who will complain later um, and complaining. They're going to say, oh, we bought stuff we didn't need, right? I, some of us, I know, I remember my cousin going to a wedding where she complained about how uh, there was just so much there. It was just overkill. There was stuff that you just didn't need, too much food, too much everything, just because the people could afford it. They had too much there. It wasn't done tastefully. It was just done because they could. So that's overselling. Underselling is when you sell to their budget, not to the results they want. And then they feel like you didn't deliver because they wanted the bigger results, but they weren't willing to pay for it. And that's underselling them. Uh, it's the, the expression, people who want champagne on a beer budget. Well, if you pay for beer, you get beer. If you pay for champagne, you get champagne. Some people understand that they paid for beer, so they're not getting champagne. Other people paid for beer, still wanted champagne, and that's when they complain again. So that's, that's underselling there, and that's the customer you walk away from. All right, so let me go back here. So let's say that every one of these blocks is a particular outcome they can get from you, a service, a product, something that's part of what you sell. You present them with this regardless of what their budget is, because they're telling you what the results are that they want. Kind of like if, um, if a bride goes into a bridal shop, brings a dress photo in that she printed out from online or that she tore out of a magazine and she tells you what her budget is and that dress is twice as much as her budget. Show her that dress. So this is the dress. She puts the dress on, she loves it. You say, that's the dress that you, you showed me here. It's gonna be, let's just pick numbers, it's $3,000 when she told you her budget was $1,500. And she gets to decide then. If she loves the way that dress looks, it's gonna cost $3,000. If she says, I can't afford $3,000, then what you do is you start taking things away. In that case, it might be changing to a different designer, a different style, a different material. And then, yeah, you're gonna have some holes in her original plan. But when you get down to a point where they say yes, now what you've done is you've given them the top-down selling, which is probably going to come to a number that's higher than your cheapest thing. That's the difference between selling from the bottom up, which is saying we start at. We start at is our cheapest thing. So, Alyssa, to your point of do you lose the opportunities later, it depends if you still have things to sell them. <laughs> if you don't have anything else to sell them because everything was already in that package, you've lost no opportunities. You only lose the opportunities if you have things to sell them and then you don't offer it later. Packages don't stop you from being able to upsell. You, you can still upsell people. Um, I'll give you another example of this. I was working with a, a client and they had nine packages, but it really wasn't nine packages. There was such a small difference between some of these packages. I said, you're confusing people by presenting them with what looks like nine packages when it was really three different types of ser service, in their case, catering. And then within that, there were just different options. 
So what we did is we present it now as three options. And then if they choose the plated dinner, let's say, then they had options within there that were variations, whether they wanted a single entree or a dual entree and so forth. But we first narrowed down to the type of service they were looking for and then gave them options. But it looked like three, even though the nine choices were still there. Uh, just did this with a photographer as well. He had five packages. We got rid of his lowest package altogether because he's only looking to do about 20 or 25 weddings a year. I said, don't put it on your options list. If somebody comes to you and is having a small wedding during the week and you want to offer them a lower service for that, that's fine. But don't present that as an option. So you don't want somebody who's getting married on a Saturday to see that you had this cheap option because somebody might ask for it. Don't even show it to them. Don't even offer it. It's not available. So we cut it to what was four, but really wasn't four because it was really three. And then there was one of them had an option to add something on. This is that upsell again. So when he's selling it now, he's showing them three options. And if they choose the one that's got another variation, he says, great, would you like it to be this way or that way? Now he's got the price. So it doesn't stop you from doing um, upsells. The flat rate idea is to reduce the basic number of choices. Again, think about the price fix menu. The price fix menu is a flat rate, but yet I can add on the steak. I could add on lobster. I could add on whatever the other options are there. One of the most expensive restaurants in the world is called the French Laundry. It's in uh, uh, Napa, California, or Sonoma, California, uh, wine country. And it starts at, last time I had looked, it started at $350 US per person. So what is that Australian? Probably 450, 475, something like that. And yet it's the chef's tasting menu. It's a flat rate menu. However, you can add on the foie gras. You can add on the shaved black Australian truffles. Thank you for sending those up here. You can add things on. If you added everything on, that $350 went to over $600. So Alyssa, that's a great question. It's a flat rate that actually still has add-ons. So they're not mutually exclusive when it comes to that. So, and again, if anybody else has a question, please just type it into the chat over there. Be more than happy to answer it. So the idea here is not just in, in packages versus a la carte, it's all throughout the sales process. How do we reduce the friction? How do we make it easier to buy? You think you're being helpful by telling everyone everything you can do for them, but you're really not. Because the more we tell them, the more we confuse them, the more we cloud their heads with information that they may not need to know to make this decision. And then what ends up happening is you very often get customers who say to you, wow, you've given us so much to think about. We need to go home and process this. If you hear that a lot, that's your fault. <laughs> it's not their fault. That's your fault because you were the one giving them too much information. Yes, occasionally you're going to just have somebody who says, you know what, we, do, we, we need to go home and think about this. If you hear it a lot, you have to say, let's look in the mirror. What am I doing that's providing with so much information that they're having information overload? That's decision paralysis. There's a great book called The Paradox of Choice. The Paradox of Choice by Barry Schwartz is talking about how do we make it easier for people to buy, and we do that again by giving them fewer choices that will get them to the results that they want. And this happens throughout things that we buy. Uh, think about your cell phone service, or, or is it you know cell phone and TV and telephone, and you know where do they bundle these things, right? or they bundle the channels when you go to buy TV. There was a lot of talk about deregulating in, in such a way that the you could buy your TV channels a la carte, but the cable companies and the satellite companies, and they, they don't want you to do that because they know that people would pick only a few channels, not this whole bundle, and there's a lot of stations that just wouldn't get chosen. Those stations, by being in the bundle, they might get seen more often, Plus, you'll end up paying more money because you're paying for this whole bundle. So you want to make it easier to buy. Imagine if your you know, cable company 
who has 300, 400 channels said, pick an a la carte package. How would you do that? <laughs> How would you start to pick out the ones that you want? You start going through the list and go, oh, well, uh, um, I want this one and that. It's 300, 400 choices. You can't do that. They make it easier to buy by saying, do I want this bundle of stations? Do I want that bundle? Or do I want this bundle add on the sports? Do I want this one add on the movies, right? That's how they make it easier. It's packages. Uh, when you buy a car, just look at the window sticker on a car. It's packages. You have different models. Those themselves are packages because they include certain features that the other ones don't have or they build on that. And then there's the cold weather package. And then there's the sound system package. And there's the premium package. All these things. It's the same idea. Adapt this to your business. These are really, really successful, smart companies that have decided that packages is a better way to sell. Uh, even Disneyland. Disneyland, people go, come to go to Disneyland and they bundle together the vacation package. Tickets to the parks, hotel rooms, rental cars, sometimes meals, all into the packages. Why? Easier to buy. What did the cruise ships do? You go to get on a cruise ship, you pay one price, the meals are included. Not everything's included. Sometimes bars included, but sometimes it's only basic bar drinks, not the you know fancier drinks. Uh, activities, some are included, some are not included. So packages can still have options. It's how do we make it easier for someone to say, yes, I want you to provide those results. So again, if anybody's got any questions, please type them right into the chat. I'd be more than happy to answer those. Now, let's say your service doesn't lend itself to more than one option. Um, if you're a celebrant and all you offer is you coming and doing their, their ceremony and you always do things a certain way and that's the one thing you offer, maybe packages isn't the thing for you. If you want to increase your profitability, there's only two ways to do that. You either have to raise your prices or you have to offer them other services that they'll buy and then you'll make profit on that. And like I said earlier, if, in case you weren't here, those could be services somebody else provides or they could be the services that you're providing to them yourself. So not everybody, uh, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily lend itself to it, but for most people in our industry, you have more than one thing that you offer people. So again, I would go back and look at what are you selling them separately? Which of those things should be bought together? Or quite frankly, you don't want them to not be bought together. They have to buy the way you sell. When we walk into a store, we have to buy the way they sell. If someone comes to you for your service, whether it's your flowers or your decor or your venue or your catering, or photography or video or transportation or dresses or invitations or favors, go down the list. The average couple uses 12 to 14 different services for, the, for, for their weddings, right? Make it easier for them to buy by reducing the number of choices. Those choices are the things you have, but you're making them buy certain things together. So I hope that makes sense for you there. So uh, Alyssa, any other questions or Emma or anybody else uh, tuned in here? Let me know because we still have a little bit of time here. I'm just uh, making sure, here we go. Okay, uh, should you always match what your competitors are doing when it comes to packages versus a la carte? How do you differentiate yourself without making yourself cheaper than your competition? Okay, great question. So should you always match what your competitors are doing? Not because they're doing it. You should look at what your competitors are doing and then decide if that makes sense for you, especially when it comes to pricing. Way too many people are looking at what their competitors charge and pricing themselves based upon what the competitor charges. It's good to know what they're charging, but what you don't know is their expense structure. You don't know what their goals are. Maybe they own their building and you're paying rent. Maybe they own their vehicles and you're paying for your vehicles. Maybe their all family is their staff and they're not paying those people as much as you might have to pay employees. So you could follow your competitor's pricing structure and end up putting yourself out of business. 
because you're not profiting enough. Uh, that happened to me 10 years ago when I started my business. Uh, I looked at what other people were charging. I charged more. I made myself more expensive than the competitors, but it wasn't enough more. And I was doing a lot of business and I was bringing in money, but it wasn't profitable because I was basing myself on other people, even though I was charging more. My prices got to the point where they were probably five times what they were when I started and I was busier than ever. So more profitable and busier. Looking at what your competitors are doing. Let's uh, give an example here for, um, uh, let's say you're a venue that does catering as well. So you're the venue and the catering. How you sell, how your competitors sell, it would be nice if you all sold in a similar way so that people can compare you to the other one without getting confused. So know what your competitors are doing, shop that, don't do what they're doing just because they're a competitor and they're doing it. And some people say, yeah, but they're really successful. But why are they successful? You don't know that. Are they successful because they're the advertising and marketing? Are they successful because they've been in business longer than you and they have a lot of repeat business and referral business that way? Are they successful because they're just so cheap that people are buying them? And if you charge those prices, yeah, you'd get those sales, but you wouldn't be making any profit. So know what they're doing, but don't follow it just because they're doing it. Okay, uh, another question. What are your thoughts on partnership packages? Like if a florist partners with an invitation designer and a rental supplier to do one big all-encompassing package. I love it. I think it's a great idea. I think you're then pooling together your inquiries. And this is, again, very common with venues here where uh, the venue will also offer the some flowers, entertainment, maybe a cake and stuff like that. And the way it works is packages. If I'm a venue and I included the florist in there, I would then send you to the florist. The florist would say, you're going to get centerpieces and show me some pictures and say, you can choose any of these. We can customize the colors, but you can use any of these styles and then you, whatever else was included. If you would like something else, or if you would like different flowers that are not part of that package, you can just pay the difference. So you can still be included in that, make it easier to buy. Uh, my one client that I mentioned is selling more of their top package. If you weren't on earlier, they came up with three packages and more people are buying their top package than they had anticipated. So, and it's because they like the fact that they don't have to make all those other choices. Uh, I was just working with somebody else and she didn't currently offer packages. She was a venue. She has come up with a package that she, the way she describes it, it's everything you need for your wedding with the exception of what you're going to wear. So it has the venue, all the rentals, tables, chairs, linens, all that kind of stuff. It's got the catering, photo, video, DJ, flowers, cake, go down the line. It's all of that. And the people that she's already presented it to love the idea that if they don't want to have to go make 12 to 14 decisions, because that's what the typical wedding does, they can make one decision. And then she will have them sit with the caterer. She will have them sit with the cake baker. She will have them sit with the florist where they can make the choices, but not have to do the buying because the buying's already been done. Um, I did a, a, a webinar recently. It was a panel discussion with a bunch of venues on when they refer suppliers, the other suppliers, are they doing it as white labeling? Are they referring them and taking a referral fee or a commission or not? It's different ways to do that there. Uh, are they not offering any other services and they're saying this is, you know, where the venue is just the venue. All of the venues had some option that included either referring them to or actually selling the other suppliers as part of that. So uh, that's a great question there, Alyssa. Uh, I think if you if it's things that are typically needed together, why not put them together in a package and say, hey, make one decision and you get all this. It's a great way to do it. You're, you, remember, you're not trying to sell them. You're trying to make it easier to buy. So if you as the florist, let's see, you said flowers, invitations and rentals. So the question is, who would get to see them first? Not likely the invitation company. <laughs> They're not likely to see them first. It'd be the florist. Could be the uh, designer, right? Uh, could be the rental supplier, depending upon who they go to first. So 
what I would say is whoever's at the top of the food chain there, which would normally be the venue and the caterer would be the top of the food chain, but photographers, I remember going to a videography uh, to speak for a group of videographers and the room was filled with videographers and one DJ. And the DJ was a member of this association and the DJ was there because he sells videography services for one of the videographers. So included in his packages, he has an option where you could have video and he, the DJ is selling it. So this videographer loves him because they don't like to do sales, but they love to shoot video. So they get to do what they love to do. They're making money. The DJ is making money there as well. Okay. Um, would you generally suggest showing your a la carte options first and following with packages as a selling technique? No, I actually would not. Uh, what I would suggest is don't show them anything or talk about the results of hiring you, which is beautiful weddings, stress-free, uh, guests having the time of their lives. And then the how you get there is through those packages. Uh, personally, I would either offer a la carte or packages. I wouldn't do both. I would offer packages with a la carte options. So you can upgrade, you can, you'll have choices within the package that are no difference in price. And then there are choices that are gonna cost you more. Uh, but I would pick a lane there. I have a client here in the States, they're very successful. They have 43 different venues in six or seven different states. And they have, they show three different package options and then a la carte. They used to have five package options and I got them to cut that down. So three package options in a la carte. And I asked them, first of all, do you offer a la carte every day of the week? And the answer is no. And then secondly, how many people are buying the a la carte? And they said, almost no one, because the packages are a better value. And then put side by side, you can see that it's a better value because of the things included. And if you did it the right way, you're showing them that if they bought everything a la carte, it would actually cost more than if you buy the package. That's one of the best ways to create your packages. You create a package, adding things in, add up the total, even if you had to play with the rates a little bit so that the a la carte rates are a little higher, and then say, if you buy this package, it would have cost you this, but because it's the package, it actually saves you this. And here's where the magic comes. If someone says, I don't want something that was in that package, the value of that discount is usually more than that thing they don't want, and you say, no worries, no difference, no difference in price. You could let them substitute something, but you don't want to lower your price. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I said this when I was down there, but every dollar you lower your price without taking something away is profit you gave away. And that's why in my Jenga example, if you don't take something away when you bring the price down, all you're doing is taking your profit and giving it away. That's it. Okay, what would you say is the magic max number of packages to offer? Uh, or is it really just the one, two, and we can cut out, cut from there? The most you should ever show someone is three. You can have more. You really can. But they can't be right for every customer. So what you want to do is never present a customer with more than three packages. And that could be good, better, best. And that's why you're trying to do what's called that center stage effect, where you want them to see go to the middle. You want them to see that the bottom one is missing some things they might want. The top one has things they don't necessarily need. The middle one is the one that's it's implied to be the best because it's in the middle. If you label it most popular or if you label it best value, you'll sell even more of it because of that. But I would never show a customer more than three, um, I, but you can have more. If, if your service requires that there are more options than that, just before you present it, start eliminating them there. Uh, let's see. Oh, that was the next question. What's the maximum number of packages offered? The maximum number that you would show someone is three. The maximum number you could have could be you know, unlimited, but realistically, you're gonna confuse yourself when you have to keep track of all these different options there, which is another benefit of packages. Because if they're buying this package, it includes all these things. And now it's just a matter of what are the variations within here? So if they're doing up lighting, it's a, what color do you want, right? If they're doing a photo booth, it's did you want props or not props? But if there was no difference in price, there you go. Uh, there's go Rob is saying that was going to be my question. <laughs> there you go. So the idea is how do we make it easier for people to buy? 
And that's by presenting them with the results that we're gonna provide. And this package will get you to those results. You can still customize. And I said this the first thing, if you weren't on here in the beginning, everything that you do is custom. It always is custom. No, even if they buy a package, even if you only sold one package. I have a client in, in Pennsylvania here in the, in the States, and she, she's a venue, and she only has one package. She has two full pages, single space of options for those packages, but she only presents it as one package. And then within the package, you have choices. So she has this list of 15 or 16 things. And part of the package is she says, you can choose 10 from this list. So people feel like I have so many different possibilities here. I'm not being limited by her only having one package. So it's very smart because she's saying, here's my package. You can choose within that. And then here are things you could add on. In her case, adding on photography, adding on video, adding on you know other decor items and things like that. The package is already very complete, but you can still add all these things on. So a lot of people think that packages are very limiting, but they're actually not. If you do it well, they're not gonna be that limiting. All right, we have a couple of minutes left on here. So if anybody has any other questions, I know Rob, they took your question, but uh, if, you, if you have another one, feel free to ask. Again, salute. The people that I work with, we almost always go with packages versus a la carte. I just want to make it easier. What we don't do is we don't say, here's the package, here's the list of things that are in that package, and here's how much it is. Because then you're selling a commodity. And here's how you know if you're selling a commodity. If I look at your packages, if you show me your packages, and I take your name off of that, can I put one of your competitors' names on that, and they can fulfill everything on that list? If that's the case, then there's nothing unique about what you're selling and a competitor can come in, sell that same thing cheaper and take the sale away from you every time. Because if they can't perceive a difference between you and somebody else, the cheaper price is gonna win. So what you wanna be selling is the results instead. Like when I said that, uh, that DJ before who was selling Ceremony Sound System is one of his options, he, he says on his website, not it's a ceremony sound system. It's going to have wireless microphones and speakers and, and whatever. He says, do you want to ensure that your grandmother can hear every word of your personalized vows as well as everyone else, no matter how close or far away they are at your ceremony? That's different. And you go to his competitor's site and it's going to talk about wireless microphones and sound system. Okay. Uh, thank you for this question. Where can people find you for more expert advice? Well, you can find me on my website, alanberg.com. So it's just my name, alanberg.com, A-L-A-N-B-E-R-G.com. Or if you like podcasts, I have the Wedding Business Solutions podcast, conveniently if you're watching here over my shoulder, Wedding Business Solutions. So go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, any of the podcast ones, or YouTube on YouTube as well. Look for the Wedding Business Solutions podcast. Uh, today is actually three weeks since we launched. And last I looked, we have about 2,300 downloads already. They're short. They're anywhere from seven or eight minutes up till about 15 minutes, the episodes. So they're nice and easy to consume. Most of them are around 10, 11, 12 minutes. So you can listen to it on your commute. You can listen to it while you're working out. Grab another one and there you go. Uh, so my website or on uh, the Wedding Business Solutions podcast on YouTube or on your favorite uh, audio app, uh, you can do that there. And uh, of course, on Facebook, you can find me, uh, Alan Berg, uh, it, just, we'll look up, it's actually Alan Berg, the number one, because I was a little too slow to get Alan Berg or Alan Berg speaker is my business page there as well. So any other questions? Because you guys have the rest of your day to get to and I have the rest of my bourbon. I think we're good. So easy weddings, let me know. Do we uh, we still have any time or questions or are we uh, done? When am I visiting you in Australia? So I think the um, the question would be, Rob, when will you let Americans come back? <laughs> I think that's the more question because you guys are much better than us on containing it uh, than we are over here. Although I have been vaccinated. Um, every time I say that, I feel like I'm a pet. I got my shots. You know, I have been vaccinated. 
Uh, both of them are ready. So I am uh, theoretically 95% uh, uh, protected myself and you know wearing my mask and all that kind of stuff. So Rob, I would say more likely 2022 would be than 2021. And I think uh, that's a safer bet. So I hope to be able to get back down there because uh, I'm uh, missing. I was supposed to be down there last year and uh, that obviously didn't happen. So, so I would say, Rob, when you're doing um, the uh, Easy Weddings uh, conference again, then uh, maybe I can come back down. So I'll, I'll wait for the invitation. How's that? All right. Are we uh, uh, easy weddings here? Tell me, uh, Emma, are we wrapping up? I don't see any answer on that one. So I'm going to assume so because you guys told me we're about an hour in here. Unless, uh, unless anybody has any other questions. So cheers. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Tune into the Wedding Business Solutions podcast and uh, follow me over there. Subscribe to that. Post a comment. I'd love to hear your suggestions for topics, suggestions for guests. And uh, if you have any questions directly, reach out to me directly through Facebook, through my website, through the podcast. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you to Easy Weddings for inviting me to uh, come on here. And uh, I look forward to, as Rob said, coming down there to see you again. And have a great day.